Hi, I'm James. This is my E36 and in today's video we're going to be talking about a brake upgrade to take our brakes from 286 to 300mm. Let's get to it! Now in the UK at least, E36s on the 325i and 328i came with brakes at the front of 286mm. And if, like me, you've used your car on track, you'll realise that there's probably a bit more braking that you'd need. There's a couple of options available to us as E36 owners. And if you've got where a case where money is absolutely no object and you can go for a big brake kit, then you're looking at about 1800 to two and a half thousand pounds here in the UK for a full setup with calipers, with pads, with the right discs. It's a substantial investment. Another option that you might want to consider is going to E36 M3 brakes. They come up second hand in the UK. Here's an example of some I found on eBay. The problem with E36 M3 brakes is you can't bolt them onto 325i and 328i hubs. You need E36 M3 hubs, so it's not just a case of buying the brakes, you need to buy the hubs as well. And then you also need to add adapt for the change in brake bias and you'll most certainly need a new brake master cylinder servo brake master servo a third option that you might want to consider is you and is very popular actually with e36 owners is you can go for e46 330i brakes they put you up to 325 mil at the front and again uh, like the solution i'm going to be talking to they are a simple bolt on you can just go swap out your e36 brakes and put on your E46 brake calipers and you're done. The problem with that though is that the brake bias is wrong and you have to go back and start mucking around with brake master servos again, all of which adds to the cost. Also, people know that 330i brakes from an E46 are what E36 owners do and they're quite expensive. Here's a pair I found on eBay in the UK. They're 150 pounds. They don't look brilliant. So we've got a, effectively a platinum, uh, solution in the big brake kit, we've got a gold solution in the E36 M3 kit, we've got a silver solution in the 330i from an E46 kit. There is a bronze solution and that's the solution I'm going to be talking to you about today and let's get into some more detail and I'll explain where 300mm discs come from and how it's such a good budget option if, like me, you haven't got £2,500 to go and buy a big brake kit and you don't want to do the other options. So the key part of our brake upgrade going up to 300mm discs is the piece of information which is that 325CI on the E46 platform came with 300mm discs. But what it also came with was completely the same calipers as fitted to E36, 325i and 328i and probably some other E36s. I'm not, an, I, I haven't got all of the knowledge of all of the models. The way that they got the calipers to stay the same but the disc size to increase by 14 mil which I'll show you in a minute isn't a lot um, is that they use different caliper carriers so what I've got here is the E46 325CI caliper carrier that enables you to run a slightly larger disc and it's notable because it, it is clearly a little bit different to the regular one this has come off my car you can tell my car's 30 years old so this looks terrible um, the key piece of change that they've done, other than allowing for that increase in size, and if you're looking for one of these caliper carriers second hand, is that the top of it is completely flat, whereas on the 286mm caliper carrier, it's ever so slightly domed. Also, on the back here, there is no bit of metal here, but if you look on the caliper carrier for the bigger disc, there is this piece of metal here. So you may be thinking, well, actually, going up from 286mm to 300mm isn't going to give me a great deal of difference. And you're almost certainly right. But there are one or two couple of things that, that happens. We've got slightly larger discs, which means we've got slightly larger mass, which is bad. Unsprung mass is bad. But it also means that you can take a slightly greater amount of heat before the brakes start to fade. You can absorb more heat into a bigger mass of steel. The benefit, of course, is that we get to keep the existing calipers, but in this case, they sit ever so slightly further out. Now, I have an engineering degree, and I should be able to explain why having your caliper further out from the point of rotation improves the braking force. I'm sure 30 years ago I would have been able to do that, but not right now. But 
I assure you, you get slightly more braking effort as a consequence of having your clamping force further out from the point of rotation. So you might be thinking, well, there's not much benefit, and actually, there, you know, what is the cost? Well, for me particularly, this is my old disc from my 325i. As you can see, it is not in particularly good shape, so I needed new discs anyway. So I was looking at changing them, and the price difference, in the UK at least, between one of these discs here, 286, and one of these 300mm discs is just £3. So it's a very cheap upgrade from a disc point of view. Also, I mean, the discs are commonly available in all motor factors in the UK still. The cost of the caliper carriers, it was actually cheaper to be able to, to, be able to buy a 325 CI caliper and carrier together, which is what I've got here, um, than it was to buy the calipers, uh, the carriers individually. When people know what they've got, which is a potential cheap E36 brake upgrade, people are asking 20 or 30 pounds each for these sort of things. These, that carrier and this caliper, if I recall correctly, was something of the order of 12 to 15 pounds. It was used, and as you can see, I've rebuilt it with a new set of seals and a new piston, albeit the existing one was fine, but I thought it best to rebuild it. So what we've got here then is a super easy, super cheap bolt-on solution for improving brakes on your E36 to take them up from 286 to 300 mil. The key point being is that it uses your existing calipers and if you are able to get hold of caliper carriers and your existing calipers are good, then all you need are discs and the carriers and you can reuse your existing calipers and your existing brake pads too. So a super easy solution. Just before I fit them up to the car though, let me just demonstrate this. This is the 300mm disc. I've just taken it out of the packaging as you can see. And there we go, 300mm. If I then take the 286 disc, I'm just going to protect the new one because I don't really want it getting scratched from this old one. But if I just take this over here and line that up to the edge, what you can see is effectively that's our 14mm difference. So whilst it you know, it's not an enormous amount of difference, but it's definitely there. And as I say, there's a very limited cost implication to this if you can get hold of those caliper carriers inexpensively like I've done. So let's get them on the car. So firstly, this is the original disc and the original caliper carrier fitted up. I've just done it loosely. It's a little bit wobbly. Let's just very quickly tighten it up. Um, but as you can see, the disc spins fine but there's actually a very, only a very tiny gap there. You cannot get 300mm discs in using these existing caliper carriers. There just isn't the room. There's probably 2mm of room there that you could go up, maybe, uh, but you'd never get your 300s in. So that is why you have to go to different caliper carriers. So with the new but second-hand caliper carrier, what you can see now is there's a, a much more significant gap here. So the that's how come we can accommodate a bigger disc. This caliper carrier sits that little bit further out and even though it takes the existing calipers that are on this car, they just stand them a little bit further out so we can get a bigger disc on. Worth noting as well that because we're using existing calipers, we don't have to muck around with brake master servos or do anything with the braking bias. We just leave the calipers as they are and just go with these discs, these carriers, and we get that extra increase in size. And now with the disc and the new caliper carrier fitted, you can see again that that space is really closed up. But we have plenty of space and, and free running for this 300mm disc. So there we go, all fitted up nicely, installed, no problems at all. Just go straight back on like you'd expect. The mounting holes for the calipers are exactly where they are on these carriers as they were on the original carriers. I'm going to talk this all up, um, make sure everything's all done up to spec, and then I can move on to the other side. So with everything back together and the car down on the ground again, it's, everything's fitting up really nicely. It's worth noting though that even though we've pushed that caliper out, there's still no issue with clearance on these 17 inch wheels. Do check if you're running 16s. I think you'll be fine, but I don't have a set of 16s to check. As always guys, I hope you found that useful. This upgrade from 286mm to 300mm, I'm not sure it's going to make an enormous amount of difference, but it's interesting to me to do it. And I think anything that we do to keep our E36s 
on the road and being enjoyed both by us and by future generations is all for the good. So to that point, if you've got an E36 build and you think I'd be interested in it, send me a link, send me your YouTube, whatever. I always want to see and hear more content about E36s. And in the meantime, I look forward to coming to you in a new video very soon. Thanks and goodbye.